Good afternoon. Let me check something here. Yes, we're working. Uh, welcome to my daily um, broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is really what this talk today is going to be about. So, let me just preface that by saying I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And the article I read today, which I'm going to talk about, didn't sit well with me. And in fact, that's what the title's about, is there are, they listed the top 10 countries in the world. I'm just going to sure I'm read that. Top 10 countries in the world that are still dangerous for women. And the countries included, for example, um, India was number one, by the way, um, Afghanistan, Syria, I'm looking at the list here, Somalia, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Congo, Yemen, Nigeria, and the United States. This is, this is, um, well, it's disheartening for one thing. Second, I guess, in a way, it invites me to realize how much more important my work is becoming because, and I'm not being selfish about this, I'm saying more people need to be talking about this, about how women have been minimized and disrespected for too long in so many areas, especially in this country. And so that article just basically um, casts a strong spotlight on this um, discrepancy in the, in the equality of this country. Now, I'm not going to think about racial or sexual um, equality, I'm talking about just, just gender equality, which seems to be the most uppermost, most easiest and simplest one we can get to. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, dry, it's bugging me right now. So. A couple things I want to say now, and just so I just saw what it says in the article, um, I'm just going to read what it says to that, that chapter, that paragraph. So you have it now. I, I may post the link after so I have a chance to. And it's actually on Reuters, so it's an article that's fairly well attributed, I believe, uh, from London um, Research Organization. So, United States, the only Western nation in the top ten, and joint third with Syria, for the risks women face in terms of sexual violence, including rape, sexual harassment coercion into sex and a lack of access to justice in rape crisis in rape cases that's what it says in the article um, and so the survey came after the Me Too campaign went viral last year with thousands of women using the social media movement to share stories of sexual harassment and abuse so not that that's any reason but this is the thing that's bugging me so much I was reading, I've been watching people's posts on Facebook around this area because this is becoming more vital for me. Because, yes, I'm very passionate about women having healthy relationships, but more importantly, I'm passionate about women being safe in this country. And yes, there's obviously things we need to do with legislate, legislature and um, laws, particularly like how rapists get away with murder. But it's more about the fact that how women, how we need to have a change in philosophy, a change in structure in this country, and this is what, why I mean, I'm using this one as an example because this is on the list, this country I live in as well, even though I'm not from here, I guess you'd be grateful England's not on the list, that's one other thing. So my point about this, I think, because again this is totally like free fall, free, free range, um, free range? Rat, like a, it's almost like a stream of consciousness because I've just res, I've been sitting with this article I read early and early. I want to talk about it and thank you for letting me talk to you about it because you're watching this. The culture in this country is so um, it's like basically we've painted over the cracks and we haven't bothered to really heal those cracks in this society structure. The way women are treated in this country, or just say the way women are not respecting this country because it's it's like under the surface but it's barely under the surface and I've talked about this before about men being gentlemen and respecting women that sort of stuff but this is, this is really deeper than that which is how as, and I'm speaking general terms here because again this is, an, this is a research a um, survey that absolutely was done on a smaller sample size and perspective on experts in the countries so it's not about everybody in the country but this is definitely something that I'm feeling is very upsetting right now because we're, in tw we're, in, we're at almost at the end of the second decade of the, 20, of the 2000s, of the two, yes. And we still don't have equal or equality, equal rights, equal respect, equal, and this is the thing, equal respect is probably the key part for women in this country. In this country. Yes, in the 
um, eclectic, or no, I should say, in the elite um, areas like the West Coast and the East Coast, maybe more respect is shown. But in other parts of the country, not so much. And it's not perfect here either. I mean, I've seen even in elevated conversations and elevated contexts where women are being maligned, disrespected, and, and, and talked about negatively, let me put it simply. And that goes deeper to the beliefs that people run, the rules people run, and the um, approach that's so out of, of track. So this is this may not be a solution. This is just one more. It may be more of a rant, <laughs> to be honest, because I, it just shocked me to see that against all those other nine countries, the United States is number ten out of a hundred and how many countries? One hundred and ninety something countries in the United Nations. So this is, by the way, this is, this is just the United Nations. There are countries in the world that aren't in the United Nations. But still, one would think that a country like the United States in the United Nations would rank very high in quality of respect for each other, quality of life, value of human life, and, quality, and respect for each other. Apparently, not so much. And it's, it's embarrassing in one way, but it's also disheartening because this culture is so far behind the times and yes there are a whole bunch of stuff we can talk about with the puritanical structure this country has compared with say some European countries where they put violence ahead of sexual freedom and we wonder why there's more hurt, more abuse against women we have this imbalance when we make it okay to have weapons of mass destruction where we get to have video games and movies and TV shows that portray graphic violence which anybody can pretty much watch. I mean, maybe, not even R-rated, I mean, maybe NC-17 if, if you're lucky, but where naked bodies and sexuality and sexual expression are repressed, suppressed, and ignored and hidden out of movies that have to be X-rated. Now, I'm speaking this in general terms because I'm just talking about this a philosophical piece. This is part of the challenge that we have in this country about changing the paradigm. Until I believe until the violent portrayal on shows on meat entertainment is either equal footing or less allowed than sexual expression we've got a problem in this country when, when, I remember when I lived in Germany back in whew, a long time ago uh, late 70s god that's going back a bit now I remember watching through the TV channels and regular primetime TV. There were there were there were people were around naked on TV, and it's normal there. This is going back, Jesus, forty years ago. And this country doesn't do any of that, except maybe on the premium channels because they don't have to worry about the advertisers and the rules and structures. This country is so backwards, and this is part of that um, limited paradigm we're dealing with. This country is still facing an uphill battle to really respect women. And this frustrates me so much because if you watch my broadcast, I mean, this is just the mass and just part of the feminine heart. That's what I talk about all the time. These are talks that are about waking women up, inspiring women, but also once in a while, waking the men up because we have to wake up too to recognize the power of women and we need to respect it. But the fact is, oh, that's the piece. That's another piece. Thank you. Okay, I'll give you that a second. Part of the reason I believe, you to now, <laughs> why women have been suppressed, repressed, and put down in this country is because men are shit scared of you. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting it bluntly, but that's the way it is. Women's power has been ignored, subjugated, written out of, cont of textbooks, out of history books, out of the Bible, so that men think they're stronger. Because if we acknowledge the power of women, men are no longer, on, no longer on top, thank God. It's it's the equality is a thing that has been out of balance in this culture, this country, as well as some in Europe, I'll admit that one, for many, many years. The fact that the straight white male is still top of the heap rather than equal to everybody else is the problem this country faces. And until we as, as all the men in this country, well, most of them hopefully, can put more put ourselves in places of humility and respect and reverence for the feminine. That will be a change. If we do that, and we can have that as a reality for all of men, for all of women, then we can move out of tenth place. This, this stark fact, as it were, this 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 
recognition this, that this country is so backward in this sense is a telltale sign we need to change. It's way, way part overdue. I mean, this country is what, 300, 400 years old, 400 years old? It's time it grew the F up, to be blunt. And as much as I want to make the change happen, it takes all of us. So yeah, so Karen, yes, we agree the US is backwards in so many ways, especially in regards to healthy sexual expression. It's also very visible at this moment. Ugly, awful at times. I am only hoping will clear the way. Ah, oh, there you go. Ugly, awful times. I'm only hoping will clear the way for true progress. Yes. Well, that's the thing. The more of us that talk about this, the more the more we make this public, the more we express this, then the more the change can happen. Absolutely, because we do need this country. Frankly, as much as there's all these advancements, we're so far behind the times in 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 cultural evolution, in sexual expression and honesty, in respect for individuals. I mean, this country was based on in the Constitution about respecting individuals, yet it doesn't demonstrate that. And what's happening right now with the recent change with the Supreme Court, with Robert, with Roberts, Robertson um, retiring in the end of July, opens the door for even more repression, because the people who were looking to put someone in that spot are absolutely against the progress I'm talking about. I didn't mean to be picked. Don't want to be political about it, but that's what's what, that's on the that's on the plate because it's not just about how we face each other at home, in marriage, in family. It's about how we respect each other on the street, in business, in the media, in life, everywhere we go. Kennedy, thank you. Why don't I get Robertson? Thank you. I, thank you, Gina. Yeah, the Kennedy's retiring. I got the names. <clears throat> no, Justice Roberts. I'm thinking of that's the one, and he's he's in. Kennedy is the one who's retiring. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. I appreciate that. I totally miss, miss, well, miss, switch names. So that's part of the problem, or part of the challenge, or part of the opportunity is that this country has been on, in the hands, in the grips of these old white men, mostly straight, or at least certainly publicly straight. I'm not going to play with that one. That's suppressing and repressing freedom of expression for all, for all cultures, for women for minorities for gay for everybody and the fact we're 10th on the list should wake some people up i'll post the i'll post the article underneath in the comments because it's it's a it's only a short read but it's 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 embarrassing actually it's not the right word it's shaming the fact that behind these major countries like india syria saudi arabia america is number 10 is number 10 out of 100 and almost 200 countries for not respecting women and that, my friends, isn't the country I want to live in. And I mean the sense that I would like to think that anybody watching this video has the same view, that we have a lot to improve, a lot of change to make, and and it, it's going to be grassroots. I mean, I'm getting clear about that, watching what's happening in the other side of the country. We need to do something different. What that is, I don't know, and I'm not sure if I'm, well, you know, okay, let me, <laughs> so I start, start talking and then this thought comes in the back of my head I've got to talk about this okay maybe we need to start something <laughs> oh, I did start this talk didn't I okay so here's what I'm suggesting I should say here's what Spirit's suggesting through me because I'm fighting it and I'm not letting it come through alright we need to start having conversations conscious conversations about respecting men and women both sides in a um, in a, uh, yeah revolution right here and <laughs> but it's more than just I mean we, yes well I'm not going to get political about this but we do need to make some changes on a country on a nationwide level at the same time I think we can start having conversations locally and and honestly with each other in groups in in uh, centers and connections where we can talk to each other and to release the shame and and the judgment that we keep carrying about ourselves and each other. It's time to heal those wounds and it's time that we start to show the respect that we all deserve. Um, I'm feeling myself being pulled to say I need to start this but I'm not, I, I am, <laughs> I'm watching the fight inside, excuse me a second whilst I have this little argument inside. Um, <laughs> having a committee in here is kind of interesting.
Okay, here's, I'll do it this way. Because I, I'm, pardon me, is getting skipped. The logistic just threw me, threw me a loop, so I'm just going to stay this way. If you're interested in starting a conversation about this in more of a round table setup, in a way we can actually start this opening up in a bigger way, make a note in the comments below. I'll do that. That's where I'll start. Because I, I, I'm already starting to think about doing meetup groups and everything else. I'm like, no, let's start there. So if this talk speaks to you and you want to get involved in this conversation, please comment below. Um, and I will set something up. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. And if you've got something already in place, let me know as well. Because I'm not going to say I'm the first, I'm not, I don't believe I'm the pioneer of this or the instigate of something new, it may already be in motion in different places, but I want to definitely add to the conversation and invite more people into the conversation to raise the standards and raise the respect and raise the way we, way we as a culture and we men have not treated women to the level to which they deserve, that you deserve. I think that's it. I, I, was, I, I felt there was going to be more, but I think I just, that was the point of getting out, like saying, yes, we need to do something, so let's start something revolution perhaps Karen we'll see <laughs> um, yeah there's no homework on this one and I'm not gonna I mean not give us any links to everything the, this is my Facebook live now it will be on YouTube later on and also be on my podcast later on once I figure out how to get that working properly I'm still working the kinks out I um, hope there's been a value to you and certainly hopefully working you up to some thoughts some ideas and some awareness of what's not working what we can work so that, having said that, um, my focus is mostly helping women heal their hearts to attract amazing relationships. And if that's something you're working with or challenged by, reach out to me. I'll help you with that. But this talk in particular is about respecting women, period, across, across the, the board. Um, single, in marriage, straight, gay, doesn't make a difference. This is about that. Um, hi, yeah. Long time no see. Yes, indeed. I see you, but Rob goes, yes. Well, this is my 392nd. I didn't say that at the beginning. Yeah, almost at 400 now. Getting close. Uh, my daily Facebook Live talks that end up on YouTube and other places too. This is number 392. A um, little, not off topic, but a different approach than normally. So thank you for being with me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the comments. Um, this one is, this, this may start something. So again, if this, if this speaks to you, if this inspires you, if this challenges you, if it triggers you, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll do something to start a conversation because beyond this Facebook Live, beyond this, this live stream, we can help change the paradigm so that the United States is no longer going to pretend it's off the list completely because it's time that women weren't in fear of their lives, in fear of their safety, in fear of their sexual expression. Um, it's time this country woke up. So it ties to me too, I know, but it's more about let's go forward, change the paradigm so there's no need for me to in the sense that we don't need, that we don't have women getting hurt anymore. We change, we change the structure, we change the rules, we change the paradigm so that men and women are side by side, not behind each other, or not behind one behind the other. I talked about that recently too. So, okay, I'm going to sign off because I'm running out of punchy words to say. Um, thank you for watching, thanks for being with me as always. If you have any questions, comments, message me, or reach out to me. Um, this is the beginning of a conversation that will hopefully go somewhere beyond YouTube and podcast. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow for 393. It may be more on the relationship-centric conversation at that point. Who knows? It might be more of this. But thanks for being with me as always, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.